Let's discuss the deployment of our RAT server service application. We could use our own facilities, our own infrastructure, but it is more practical uh, to use one of the uh, infrastructure providers. Uh, one of the leading providers is uh, Amazon Web Services uh, that provides Elastic Compute uh, Service where you can uh, run uh, your virtual machines and deploy uh, arbitrary uh, software. So in a production uh, scenario where we could have a, a number or big number of uh, users, we would deploy our uh, solution into a number of virtual machines. So we could uh, provision an um, application server we could, where we can install uh, RAT server bits and configure it in an auto uh, scaling uh, group where the number of uh, virtual servers running would be dependent uh, on the load coming uh, from, from end users and the actual data will be stored in a, a replicated data layer. For a simplicity, uh, in this uh, demo we are going to deploy uh, our solution just in a single EC2 uh, Windows instance. Uh, so if you click on an EC2 um, icon in the Amazon Web Services uh, web console, uh, you can select uh, in which region you want to uh, deploy your servers. Uh, in my case, I'm going uh, for US West, North Carolina, uh, North uh, California. And uh, in the uh, instances tab, I can see all my uh, instances that I have uh, defined. So you can see that right now I'm running uh, one uh, RAT server instance. Uh, its state is uh, running and I have generated, generated an elastic uh, IP address that is associated with my machine. So creating an instance uh, in Amazon EC2 is very straightforward. Uh, you start from launch instance and then there are uh, seven steps you need to follow uh, in order to provision your virtual machine. First you need to uh, select an um, um, Amazon machine image and so the starting point of your installation. Uh, in my case I have uh, selected Microsoft Windows Server 2012 uh, release to a base image 64-bit and then after you select uh, your image you can uh, specify additional uh, information uh, so the size uh, of your uh, Amazon machine image so basically a number of virtual uh, processors and the size of uh, virtual uh, memory. Uh, you can specify a virtual private uh, cloud that you want to deploy uh, your uh, machine into. Uh, you can also uh, add some storage. So by default you have uh, 30 uh, gigabytes of storage but you can also add additional uh, volumes. You can add arbit arbitra arbitrary uh, tag that will uh, be uh, useful for you to identify your virtual machines. And you also need to uh, specify the uh, security group. Uh, so here you uh, can specify uh, which uh, protocols and on which ports uh, can communicate uh, with your machine. So when you're done then you can review uh, your machine and run it. It will typically uh, take uh, good number of minutes or so maybe half an hour uh, for this machine to uh, be provisioned and up and running. So uh, these steps uh, has already been done. So now I can uh, log into the machine uh, and uh, do my uh, configuration. So I have already uh, connected to my remote machine using a remote uh, processor, uh, remote, uh, des remote uh, desktop connection. Uh, so on the on the server uh, you need to there are two ways uh, of deploying your server so you can uh, deploy it for development for testing so that's that is a standalone uh, server uh, that you can uh, deploy to or you can uh, deploy uh, to production and in this case you would uh, deploy uh, your uh, server uh, as a uh, as a um, internet information uh, server application. So in the doc wiki on Embarcadero you can see uh, the list of uh, files that you need to copy from your uh, RAT Studio installation uh, into your uh, server application. So these are those files. And once you have uh, these uh, files copied, uh, then you need to copy 
the files that are making up your application. So it's uh, very important to realize uh, that our um, application, our uh, EMS server uh, module uh, is uh, separate from the uh, EMS um, binaries. So we are creating um, our EMS uh, server as a EMS package, which is a BPL file. You can see inside my uh, RAD Studio, when I create a new uh, package, it is compiled as a BPL file. So BPL file cannot be uh, run on its own. It needs to be uh, run uh, in a host. If you, we go into the project uh, options, we can see uh, that uh, when we start the, um, this project, in fact, we are starting the EMS dev server dot exe, and then this is our host application, and it will load our BPL file. So on the remote machine, we do not have uh, RAT uh, Studio installed. Uh, so then we need to copy the uh, BPL uh, files uh, in a remote location. So in our case, in the case of our demo, there are two BPL files that I want to uh, deploy. So I have uh, copied uh, the, these two BPL files into a, a specific location in my uh, server. I have also copied the uh, interbase uh, database file uh, that is uh, used to store uh, application data. And now I need to tell uh, my server uh, that these BPL uh, files exist. So uh, by default in a, a users public public documents embarcadero dot e, um, slash EMS there is an EMS server ini file uh, that you need to edit uh, in order to uh, specify uh, information about which BPLs to load on uh, EMS server startup. So if we scroll down uh, in this uh, in this list, we can see that I have added just uh, two lines in a server packages section. Uh, so this tells uh, our server to load uh, our uh, packages. So if I now uh, restart the EMS server and the EMS server uh, I have created the shortcut for it. Uh, so now if I just uh, start a standalone server uh, you can see in the log uh, that these two, um, two uh, BPL files, you can see there is a BPL file EMS retail uh, service and there is a second BPL file uh, get sale BPL loaded. So these two files are uh, loaded and uh, our uh, EMS server uh, is uh, waiting for uh, incoming uh, uh, connection. So we, we can uh, actually try out if uh, this server is visible from outside of this uh, remote machine. I can just go into my browser and just use one of the uh, endpoints that are built in. So you can see that I can see my EMS uh, service running and waiting uh, for incoming connections.